Today, we're going to talk about why men pull away and then come back and what you need to keep in mind. All right. Now, you're not going to like this conversation because I'm going to be, well, I'm always real with you. Actually, what is real anyway? I'm just sharing with you my thoughts, my perceptions, my opinions. By no means do I suggest this is the truth, okay? So I, I think it's really important for women as well as men to understand is that many of you are living in a delusional state when it comes to romantic relationships. And what I mean by a delusional state is you really, many of you don't have a real understanding of the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, number one. And many of you operate from the perspective of you think you can attract something, you, what you actually attract in your life, you have this expectation that's going to be better than what you actually attract in your life. We see this with older men who think that, you know, on their dating profiles, they can put down younger women and that they'll actually attract those when they don't actually get those. I mean, yet, and I will say that men with money do attract those types of women because they're offering some exchange. And oftentimes women are not satisfied, especially in midlife, that men are balding and they're holding up a picture of a fish and they think they can attract better than that. Um, and when I say by this, I don't mean it as a judgment. I mean, as a delusion, we human beings oftentimes overvalue ourselves. And that's why I'm leaning into this conversation today. And it's going to take me a little while to get to why men pull away and come back, because I think many of you need a re-education on the dating, mating, or relating process. First and foremost is attraction doesn't equal relationship success. Let me repeat that. Attraction doesn't equal relationship success. And if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, I think it's important to look at this. And as you can see above the waterline, it says attraction, it says chemistry, but real relationship uh, success comes from compatibility and that's shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. And the reality is, is many humans lack a sense of emotional maturity in the relationship process. And that's why men ghost, why people ghost, why women um, disappear and why men disappear and why they act dysfunctional in relationship. I think it's important to understand that human beings, particularly right now, are thirsty for some level of connection and companionship and wanting that physical intimacy, and yet they're not capable of actually diving deeper into an emotional relationship. And again, many of you are operating from this fantasy of Disney and the notebook and serendipity as if everything, I don't know, as if everything is okay, and yet you've witnessed You've witnessed in your own life one disappointing relationship after another. And I think what's happened with a lot of people is they lack a sense of trust in the process of getting to know someone. In many cases, women have become bitter and jaded and men have become bitter and jaded as well. It's a real mess out there from a dating perspective because many of you are operating from the fantasy, men and women alike, of this idea that, you know, how do I say this? The idea that, you know, your Prince Charming or your Princess Charming is going to show up without you having to do any true deep inner work to actually attract a really good partner that's going to stick around. And I think it's because human beings, if you think about it for 200,000 years, Neanderthals are 200,000 years old. We've only had electricity for 100 years. Only had electricity for 100 years out of 200,000 years of mankind. Oops, humankind, excuse me. And within the date, the mating process for literally hundreds of thousands of years, you mated within the tribe that was in front of you. I think it's important to recognize that. There was a lot of tribe accountability in the nurturing of couplehood. Now, we have to also recognize that men slept with many women and spread their seed. And women were the caretakers of the children and men were the ones who just went out and hunted for food. And then they slept with women, at least going back a couple hundred thousand years. Why is this important to understand? 
because there's this, you know, there's this interesting narrative that's talked about that men are the hunters and men are the providers and women are the nurturers, as if it applies to the way we operate in dating, mating, or relating today. Because in the last hundred years, we operate from a dysfunctional, emotional perspective instead of the biological, instinctual perspective that happened 100,000 years ago. This is why I talk habitually about emotional maturity and relationship skills. And by the way, this is not a fact, but I believe 20% of the population has clinical issues. And while I say 20% are healthy from a relationship skills perspective, I might be generous. Most human beings are rather dysfunctional, myself included. I am not perfect in this process. What makes someone come back you know, pull away and come back is because they want that companionship with you. They want that connection with you. And yet they're afraid to lean into a deeper relationship because they haven't made the choice to actually want to be in a fully committed relationship. This is why most people who are actively dating today, men and women alike are either, again, this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion, are either users, and I say it's about 20% of the population, they're spenders or they're growers and builders. Now, a user are those love bombers, those players, those women who are gold diggers, those entitled type of women out there or men out there that are entitled. And then the spenders are the ones who are seeking companionship, uh, coupling, connection, but they have no direction. They're uncertain. They're fearful of relationship. That's why they come, they, they pull away and then come back. They're fearful of a fully committed relationship. And then the growers and builders they're fully capable of a commitment and they're ready to commit and they're ready to face their fears. And when I say that's 20% of the population, I'm probably being a bit generous there too. And this is true of you ladies as well, because many of you are fearful of relationship. And that puts you in the spender category. And the reason why I call it spender is you're spending time with someone without actually deeply growing into a relationship. It's because many of you don't understand the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship. This is why I continually recommend before you sleep with somebody, you should purchase two copies of the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, and begin reading chapter one, because it talks about trust and commitment, trust and commitment. Why is this so hugely important? Because without trust... Without trust, and trust isn't just about fidelity, trust is about, can I count on this person to care about my feelings as much as my own? Isn't it fascinating that we human beings will give our bodies to another person that we barely know and we barely trust? Think about that. It used to be that, you know, when a man wanted to have sex, he had to marry you for it. For the most part, this is in the, at least in the last couple hundred years. In the caveman days, they didn't need to have to marry you or make any commitment. But for a short period of time, commitment was required to have sex. And now that's just completely gone away. The only commitment a man has to make is simply to say, I want a relationship. Think about that. All he has to say is, I want a relationship. And a woman will say, oh, he wants a relationship. I want a relationship. Great. I can have sex with this person and it's going to work out great without really any understanding of the context of what that means and what that agreement is with each other. This is why most of you might have heard my recent um, conversation about something called the dating vow, the dating vow. And why this is so important, because this is going to help you maybe avoid the man who's going to pull away and then come back. And the dating vow is simply, and by the way, if you're not familiar, there's an old saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Ultimately, men are the gatekeepers of commitment because at some point a man has to want to say this either before he meets you or while he's with you, I want to take care of this person. That's what real commitment is. It's a level of saying, I want to take care of you. I only want you. I want you in a partnership capacity. But a man doesn't have to make any commitment of that sort and still have sex. So this is why I invite you all to do the dating vow. And the dating vow is this. It simply says the following. I, 
and you fill in your own name, and you both men and women are doing this, agree to explore the process of getting to know one another with the intent to declare something serious within the next three to six months. You make a declaration. You make an agreement to one another. You also say, I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. That's a pretty important agreement to make with one another. I agree to not actively seek to meet or date others while we're in the dating process of getting to know one another. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me instead of pulling away, ghosting, or disappearing. And lastly, I agree to invest regular time in the process of getting to know you, which includes doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends on a regular basis. By making that vow, look at for, for the ladies who follow my channel, 90% of guys are going to run away. The spenders who are not capable of being in a relationship are going to run away. You're going to lose those guys. But you know what? What are you really losing? Are you really losing a serious person? Probably not. Probably not. By the way, my coffee mug says, don't make me go all so, so, so uh, psycho roommate on you, which kind of piggybacks with my shirt today. I'm not great advice. Can I, can I interest you in some sarcastic comment today? As you know, my personality is a bit caustic, a bit sarcastic. It's a bit strong. It's a bit passionate. I'm this way, by the way, um, because I have a Middle Eastern background, we, my family and I used to yell and scream at each other. That's why I sometimes yell and scream. It's because I'm trying to get a point across to you to make sure that you're thinking about the bigger picture instead of the fantasy that many of you are operating from. This is why when clients work with me, I teach you how to ask the right questions in the early stages of dating based on your personality to determine, is this guy a user, a spender, or a grower and builder? And by the way, there's a link below to schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Because if you don't understand this, you're going to be, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. So what's going to cause you to attract the grower builder? Because I said, if you really look at, there's a delusion of what you can attract out there. Partially because many of you do very little personal development work to heal childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that cause you to have negative patterns and limiting beliefs in your life. This is why I continually recommend the book, The Hoffman Process, The Hoffman Process. This is a great starting point to start to heal from within because when you're healing from within, you are less likely to attract that man who's going to pull away and then come back. Now, that's partially because you have to love on yourself. And any of you know, I already wrote a book about self-love. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? But if you really want to be that empowered woman that attracts that guy, that grower and that builder, and the reason why they're called grower and builders is because these are the men who actually want to invest in a healthy, happy relationship. But you've got to sift through the, the weeds to find these guys. And sadly, many of you women aren't growers or builders as well. Just because you have a propensity to want to attach to another human being doesn't mean you're good at being in relationship with another human being. This is why I'm encouraging everyone these days to purchase the book, you ladies purchase the book, Why Men Love Bitches. Why Men Love Bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, E-S. This is an amazing book to start to become empowered because empowered women don't attract the flaky men to the same degree as that the woman who gives her power away. I repeat this over and over and over again. Why? Because this is all about personal empowerment. This is all about being in your sovereignty, your self-worth, your self-esteem, self-confidence. Because you will repel men who are lacking their own self-esteem, self-worth, and self-confidence. And look at, I'm here to say we have a huge mental health crisis here in the United States in particular. An emotional health crisis. In fact, the number one emotional health issue faced with human beings today is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And sadly, dating triggers this like nobody's business. 
This is why a vaccination to emotional chaos is loving on oneself. And yet we are bombarded through the social media and digital age in the in the world of swipe dating today we are bump, we, it's bastardized the process of getting to know another human being and it's important to think about all these things that's why i said you have to look at the bigger picture because men are not bad people men are not bad people they might be bad daters just like many of you are bad daters and you're bad daters cuz many of you are operating from that fantasy of some past belief of how relationships were. It's the pride and prejudice that he's gonna be chivalrous and he's just gonna be, the emotionally unavailable man is just gonna open up to you. It's a fantasy because today, for the most part, we're meeting total strangers. We don't have a tribe accountability. We don't have a tribe that's watching over us in many cases. This is why lately I've talked about the book Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Glad Glad Gladwell. <laughs> because when we are meeting strangers, it's difficult to trust someone. And yet it shocks me how easily, most of the time, people will have sex with people that they barely know. And sex is a very intimate, personal act. Look at, I'm not here to suggest, you know, you, we have free will, we have free bodies, we can do whatever we want, that's okay. I'm guilty of having friends with benefits in my life. I'm guilty of one night stands. I've been pretty forthright every time it's happened. I think I have been. Okay, that's what's most important is to be transparent with another human being. And at the same time, do your due diligence. Ladies, if you all band together for the next 90 days and stopped having sex with men, it would change the narrative because you are the gatekeepers of sex. Men are the gas and women are the brakes. And why is it all centered around sex? Because that's what we men crave. We don't walk around going, you know, the men are hunters. Well, we don't hunt going, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. I want a relationship. We don't hunt that. We hunt sex for the most part. And the growers and builders are also seeking something deeper from that. So you have to differentiate between the men who are the growers and builders. And by the way, the spenders are might be, here's the thing, the problem with the spenders most of the time, the guys who are the spenders that want companionship, connection, and coupling, the problem is if they have any dysfunction going on in their life, job issues, a divorce, an ex-spouse, issues with children, health issues. The ground underneath them doesn't feel solid. That's why they pull away and then they come, they, they, excuse me, they pull away and then come back and they pull away and come back because when the ground isn't underneath them solid, they might want something from you, but they're not capable, as I said earlier, of taking care of you. And until a man actually reaches that state where he wants to take care of someone, not you, take care of someone, and you have to be in that state of wanting to take care of someone. Well, Jonathan, I don't want to be a nurse or a purse. Well, guess what? Until you actually, till two people say, I want to take care of someone, and then they meet that person that they want to both mutually want to take care of, it's going to be difficult to have a juicy, delicious relationship like I talk about frequently. So why do men pull away and come back? Most of the time, it's because you started with the wrong choice to begin with. You chose a user or a spender, and you didn't choose a, a grower or a builder. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? If it is, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Check out the links to a free discovery call with me. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out all the books I recommend. Follow me on Instagram. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, or a pillow. Here's a teddy bear. And give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.